Hi, welcome to Math of Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about percent composition and hydrates. Specifically, we're going to look at how to understand percent composition with a bunch of worked examples. Then we're going to look at how to work with hydrates along with some more examples. Understanding percent composition. The mass of each element in a compound compared to the entire mass of the compound and multiplied by 100% is called the percent composition of the compound. Basically, it highlights the percent of mass made up of each element in the compound. A formula for percent composition is found on reference table T of your New York State reference tables. Percent composition can also be referred to as the mass percent. So if you look at table T, or if you don't have the New York State reference tables in front of you, you'll see down here that this is our formula that is given to our students for percent composition by mass. We highlight that it is the mass of the part over the whole times 100, and that's what we're going to be using during this session today. Let's look at an example of how to calculate percent composition. Find the percent composition of a compound that contains 2.3 grams of sodium, 1.6 grams of oxygen, and 0.1 grams of hydrogen in a 4 gram sample of the compound. So here we have our givens, our mass of sodium, oxygen, hydrogen, and aren't they nice, they gave us a total mass of 4 grams. So this would be the whole while the other parts that were identified for us would be the part. So let's look at how to calculate the percentage of sodium. We have our part, which is 2.30 grams that was given to us, over the whole of 4 grams times 100 gives us 57.5%. For percentage of oxygen, they give us 1.60 grams over our total mass of 4 grams, Divide that out, multiply by 100, and that is 40% of our sample. And finally, hydrogen. We are given 0.1 grams of hydrogen over our total sample of 4 grams. Divide that, multiply by 100, and again, we get 2.5%. Now, in the end, all of these percentages should add up to around 100%. It might not be exact based on rounding and how your numbers came together, but if you're wildly off and you're not close to 100%, something is wrong. Go back, check your work, try it again. Let's do another example. What is the percent composition by mass of nitrogen in ammonium carbonate where they give us the gram formula mass of 96 grams per mole? So this is our whole right here. So percent composition is part over the whole times 100. Let's start out by writing out our formula. NH42CO3. We are only focused on the mass of nitrogen and we see a single nitrogen here that makes up the NH4. And you might say to yourself, Dr. English, that's just 14 grams. That's just one nitrogen. And I say, no, it is more than one nitrogen because if you see this two right here, that's distributed. So the part here that composes this compound is actually going to be 28 grams. So when we take our numbers and we insert them into the formula, it's going to be 28 grams over 96 grams per mole, which is given to us times 100, and 28 divided by 96 is 29.2%. That's only focusing on nitrogen. Could we have focused on the hydrogen, the carbon, the oxygen? Sure, but the question only asked for the nitrogen. Let's look at another example. Which compound has the greatest percent composition by mass of sulfur? All right, so what I would suggest doing for this one is looking at the formulas that are given to us. If we look at them, we notice that in each of these compounds, it is a one-to-one -one ratio between the element that is combined with the sulfur as we go through. The next thing I would do is sort of tease out what is the mass of each element that's combining with the single sulfur. So the atomic mass of barium is 137, while sulfur is 32, 
For calcium, that is 40. Well, again, we'll just put sulfur is 32. Magnesium is 24. And sulfur is 32. And strontium is 88. Well, again, sulfur is 32. Now, some of you could look at this and say to yourself, well, Dr. English, you could look at any of these and say, you know, let's just find the element that has the lowest mass compared to sulfur, and that's going to have the greatest composition. And you could do that, but if we were going to do the work to show behind it, if the problem said, show your work, what would that look like? Well, let's go back to BAS. So we're looking for the percent of sulfur. So this is going to be 32 over our total mass of 169 times 100, and that gives us 18.9%, okay? Let's go to the next one. 32 is still going to be our part because we're looking at the percentage of sulfur over the total in this case, which is going to be 72 times 100, and our answer is 44.4%. All right, moving on to the next one, magnesium and sulfur. So 32 is going to be on top because, again, percent by mass of sulfur. 32 plus 24 is going to be 56 times 100. That percentage will be 57.1%. And finally, 32 divided by 120 times 100 gives us 26.7%. So some of you might say to yourself, Dr. English, it would have been just so much easier if you had gone back and you had looked at all the different masses of barium and calcium and magnesium and strontium. And obviously it's going to be C because that's got the lowest total gram formula mass at the bottom. And therefore, sulfur is going to have the highest mass in that compound because it's 57.1. And I'd say, sure, absolutely, you're totally right. But if they say show your work to do that, this is what you would need to do to justify your answer. Now let's talk about hydrates. Percent composition problems often involve hydrates, where the percentage of water or the anhydrate is calculated. Let's look at some key terms. What is a hydrate? A hydrate is an ionic substance that includes defined amounts of water as part of the crystal structure. Water molecules are shown as part of the formula after the ionic compound. So here we have an example of copper 2 sulfate hexahydrate. So the hydrate part of it, the water molecules, are included after the ionic compound. An anhydrate is only the ionic compound where the water molecules have been removed. So copper 2 sulfate by itself with the water molecules removed would be known as the anhydrate, also known as an anhydrous substance. Now notice, and this is super, super important, that dot in the formula is seen as an addition symbol rather than a multiply symbol when you're calculating the gram formula mass of the hydrate. Be really careful about that. Let's look at a worked example. A 10 gram sample of a hydrate was heated until all the water of hydration was driven off. In other words, evaporated off. The mass of the anhydrous product remaining was 8 grams. What is the percent of water in the hydrate? All right, so our hydrate was 10 grams. Our anhydrate, with all the water removed, is 8 grams. So 10 take away 8 gives me 2 grams, and that is going to be the mass of my water. Now, a hydrate problem is just a percent composition problem. So it's going to be part, which in this case is going to be the water, over the whole, which is going to be the hydrate, because it's the ionic compound plus the water, times 100. So now we're going to plug in our numbers. They're asking for the percent of water. So 2 grams of H2O on the top, that's the part that's water, over the hydrate, which is 10 grams, of hydrate times 100 gives us 20%. Here's a different type of setup for a hydrate problem. A student determining the percent by mass of water in a hydrated crystal obtained the following data. The mass of the crystal before heating, 5 grams, mass of the crystal after the first heating, went down to 3 grams, 
after the second heating was 2.5 grams and then a third heating was done and that was also 2.5 grams. Now this is really important because we want to make sure that the masses of our anhydrous substance are constant near the end, meaning that all the water has been removed so no water remains which could throw off our results. So this initial mass right here is the mass of our hydrate, that is our ionic compound with the water molecules included before heating. Our anhydrate is where things become constant. So this is our anhydrate down here. So what is the percent by mass of water in the hydrate? Again, this is part, which is going to be the water, over the whole, which is going to be the hydrate, times 100. So the part, because we're looking at the water here, is 2.5 grams. And you might say, well, Dr. English, how do you know that the water is 2.5 grams? Because the original mass of the hydrate is 5 grams minus the mass of the anhydrate, which is 2.5 grams. I'm getting that from down here. And if I take the difference of that, it's 2.5 grams. So that gives me the mass of my water, which I've written down here. So 2.5 grams of water over the total mass of the hydrate, which is 5 grams, times 100. So 2.5 divided by 5 times 100 is going to be 50%. So 50% of the mass of the crystal before heating was water. So what did you learn? We talked a little bit about percent composition and what that entails, and we looked at some worked examples. Then we looked at understanding hydrates and what that means, and then did some more worked examples. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.